okay? Up next, a guy who has the uncanny ability to do a sports report from the payphone in the hallway of Federal Express. That's why if you listen real closely towards the end of some reports, it goes like this. That's in sports, this is Danny Ferris, Pitch 106. Now what you don't hear is, what, who? Oh, my wife, Rosie's sick, I had to call her. Bob and I, and everybody who know him, thank da Harry Arroyo for that beautiful, beautiful right that sent him to the canvas and made him a sports broadcaster, Danny Ferris. Jeez, you guys won't ever let me forget that, will you? <laughs> First it was Miles Strauss, now it's Harry Arroyo. I don't know, for some reason I feel like I should be brought to you by McDonald's or something. I, uh, <laughs> I just feel uncomfortable. You know, Syracuse won last night, Bobby. That only means one thing, but I'm going to leave them on today. Got the I, I've got the shorts on, but... <laughs> sweatshirt too, but just a little too bulky under the coat. And the hat, and the coffee the mug. The hat, the coffee mug, we do it all. Look at these damn things back uh, <laughs> I'm a nervous wreck up here. You okay, Dad? Yeah. Good. I can't keep this up here. This is terrible. <laughs> Story of that life. That's what Rosie says. That's what Rosie says. That's what Rosie says. <laughs> he can't keep it up. The last time I was this nervous before people was the Arroyo fight, and like I said, we all know what happened there. No, what happened? <laughs> Second round, I think it was. I, I'm not too sure. I read about it in the paper the next day. In the short time that I've known Bobby, though, honest to God, between my wife Rosie and I, I've suffered more than a cowboy with hemorrhoids, honest to God. He has put me through some kind of hell, this guy. As my wife would say, how do you describe someone who really, who, who's touched your life like the plague? The guy is disgusting. He's going to die of Pepsi-Cola poison someday, and I'll be happy when it happens. He's a, I was in Rochester for two weeks. We had a Federal Express school out there, just to give you an example. And Bobby thought it was a great idea to have my wife do the show for two weeks. The first week, Bobby's on vacation, so she did it with Joe Moss, and she felt great, comfortable. Really turned out real well. The second week, Bobby came back, and she said to me over the weekend, I'm not doing it with the guy. I said, come on. I said, he's not that bad. He's very professional. He'll help you out. He'll comfort you. He'll, he'll be right there with you. I said, just do it one day. Everything will be okay. She calls me that Monday afternoon, you son of a bitch. She says, I'm not doing it the rest of the week. He gets her on the phone, the first thing out of his mouth, well, Rosie, not at Danny's out of town. You've been getting him much or what? <laughs> I had to do it from Rochester over the phone the rest of the week of pay for him. The guy's disgusting. <laughs> One time I really thought, <laughs> here, <laughs> This isn't satisfaction for me, by the way. Satisfaction is my last day at Pix 106. I'm going to haul up and belt the guy. That's satisfaction for me. I just, I just turned down a fight in South Africa. I got a call from a promoter. They offered me $7,500 to go over to South Africa, fight, come home with the money, everything like that. I turned it down. I'm not interested in coming out of retirement. If someone offers me a piece of toilet paper tonight, I will come out of retirement for one and one person only. A piece of toilet paper, mind you. I did have one fight with Frankie Sheen a few years ago, and I really thought Bobby could help me out with this particular fight. I asked him to work my corner, him and his ex-partner, Billy Sheen. I thought it was great. It was a publicity stunt. We could have used the publicity on the fight. And Bobby loved the idea. The whole week, during the week, 6 o'clock every morning, call me. You're out doing your war work. You're bummed. You lose. You're going to embarrass the hell out of me. Rosie, leave him alone. No sex before the fight. You're not supposed to do that. You should be sleeping on the couch. The whole week, I had to go through that. Friday night's the fight. I get to the fight, and I got my black velvet trunks on, nice robe, and I got the PIX 106 logo on it. And I'm, I was all excited, and I get into the arena, and I wanted to go up and show Bobby my trunks. I was, I was like a little kid. I was so excited. And I'm walking up to where Bobby was, and I had the commissioner, Rich Herring, with me. We got about 15 feet from Bobby, and I swear to God, he slouched over a rail. He's got a drink in one hand. His belly's hanging over the rail. And we both just stopped. 
out and took a look at the guy. <laughs> and Rich looked at me and I looked at him and said, you know, Danny, you've done some strange shit in your career. <laughs> but I can't believe you let this guy work in the corner for this fight. I think he should retire. <laughs> I was a nervous wreck. I didn't know what to do. Because <laughs> I got a guy like that in my corner. How do you win? <laughs> I did win the fight. Ten rounds, it was great. I'm gonna get a raise after this, I swear. I'm gonna need it. Bobby pulls a lot of weight around the station to picks 106, and after looking under this cumberbund, he's got a lot of weight to pull. Bobby, thanks for being here. It was a great time.